opportunity to hear some of the messages. Um, one of the things that I've said all along throughout the series is, this series is incredibly relevant to you, whether you're married or not, because statistics say 94% of people, whether they're married because they've have been single or whether they're not married because they've gone through a divorce, 94% of those people will enter into a marriage relationship again. So that's the number one reason why this series is incredibly significant. I think also coupled with that, it is very important that we realize and understand God's heart for a Christ-centered marriage and family. Because he had a plan from it at the very beginning, long before sin, we talked about that last week, for us to have experienced blessing in our marriage. Our marriage relationships are so incredibly important, and we want to take a couple minutes to share a few highlight statements that maybe you can jot down, you haven't heard them yet throughout this four-week series, that you can take away with you and apply to your marriage before we dive into this final closing marriage. So the first one is, I want us to read it together. It's on the screen. Are you ready? Marriages that pray together stay together. I think that's incredibly valuable because it works exactly the same way in your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have a great prayer life and communication line with Christ, you will be able to thrive in your relationship with Jesus Christ. If your relationship with Jesus Christ is broken and basically you show up on Sunday and say, hey, are you still there, God? Well, because of his grace and mercy, he is still there. But you are going to miss out on so many of the blessings and the joys of that relationship with Christ because you have a lack of communication with him throughout the week. So marriages that pray together stay together. Number two. Number two is assume the best. This goes back a couple weeks ago to the whole, the whole service was about communication. And this was a big one, was assuming the best in your partner. Because oftentimes, when we hear our partner say something, we assume the worst. Or if they do something that we don't like, we assume the worst. If Brent's late, I don't assume that he's late because he doesn't want to be with me and with the kids. I assume the best that he's working and he has something that has to get done. If he says something that kind of sounds off to me, I'm not going to assume the worst. I'm going to assume the best and just take it for what he said and not read more into it than what he's trying to say. We don't speak in code to each other or anything like that. Our yes is yes and our no is no. So assume the best. And it, thinking the best of your spouse um, gives them a chance to live up to those high expectations. And we're going to talk more about that later. But. And number three takeaway, forgive. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15 is the verse that we use for this. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Obviously, this is a Christ-centered principle for all of our life. But of all relationships that you should apply this to, you should definitely apply it to your marriage relationship. Because it's such a valuable relationship. And the second verse is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 through 27 says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. In other words, be quick to reconcile. I said this, I think it was last week. Um, in our, we were married in 1996. I've never slept on the couch. She's never slept on the couch. I've never slept in a separate room. She's never slept in a separate room. And we never will. Because we're married. And I think this is the value that we have of making sure that Christ is the center because it holds us accountable to make sure that we forgive and that we reconcile and work through issues so that we can experience Christ's best for our marriage relationship. And I think that's what's really important when you think about those verses is experiencing Christ moving through forgiveness because he forgave you. And one of the things we talked about during the series is if we treated relationships in this world, if we treated them the way that Christ treated us, the world that we live in would be radically different. Because Christ forgives us, and he doesn't keep a record of wrongs. He forgives, and then the, our sins are as far as the east is from the west. If we would model that kind of life and forgiveness in our marriage relationships, wow, they would be radically different. We've said from the beginning in this series, that Christians, Christ followers, should have the most godly, fulfilling marriages that have ever existed. 
full of joy and passion and peace and love. And people should look at it and say, wow, I want that in my life. The next one. The next one, we'll try to keep it clean, is sex is a gift from God, so enjoy it. Amen and hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You can refer to last week's message for more, but it is a gift. It should be enjoyed. It's not a tool to uh, reward or punish each other. It's not something that's a quota. It's not um, something negative. We need to take back the gift that God gave humankind and enjoy it for what it is. Right. And if last week we had kids out for both services because we did a whole week on sex and we just, you know, the bottom line is that it was given as a gift of God and it came before sin. It's a beautiful thing. Christians should have the best sex lives of anybody that's ever existed. It's just a reality. And if you want to know more about it and what we said about it, we got even deeper than that, (laughs) um, you can watch it on YouTube. There's plenty of other videos on sex on YouTube, so you might as well watch a good one. Um, The next thing, the most valuable and important earthly relationship you'll ever have is your relationship with your spouse. Did you hear that? The most valuable and important earthly relationship you'll ever have is your relationship with your spouse. More than work, more than kids, more than anything else, the relationship you have with your spouse is the most important. And so we should foster it and invest in it and have a work ethic to protect that relationship more than any other relationship that exists in our earthly life. The next one is that love, like we said, is a verb. And that requires creativity. Like he said, it requires work. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. You know, if you're going to drift in your marriage, your dr- marriage is going to drift apart. No marriage drifts together. Husbands and wives do not just kind of happen to make it work. It takes work to make it work. You never drift to each other. You always drift apart. And so love is a verb. It takes effort. It takes work. And it takes a vision. The very first uh, week of this whole series, I got to talk about roles of wives and husbands. And we talked about how the It is the role of the husband to be the spiritual leader of your family and to get a vision for what God wants for your marriage and for your family. And I told the wives, it's not your job to nag your husband about what your vision is. So hopefully you haven't been doing that these past two weeks. But I never said that I couldn't remind you. You got to get a vision for your family. I know in our marriage, vision is never an issue. We always have lots of vision with Mr. Strategy over here. It's like, okay, you know, we got it. We got it. But sometimes we need a little reminder. We need to seek the Lord. Husbands, I'm just asking you, seek the Lord and then talk about what you think the Lord is telling you with your wives, because we want to be there for you. We want to support you in the plan that God has for our families. And if you don't have kids for our, just for our marriages, that enough is a big project. But you got to get it. And, you know, worrying about all the extra stuff. Seek the Lord first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That's what it says in the Bible. The, he is the first one. Go to Christ first and get that vision. And then it will all it will all fall in place behind there. It will all take a lot of work, but it will all fall in place behind that. Um, And then I think with that, this is a great question for not only your individual life, but for your marriage. If, If money was no object, and your marriage could be anywhere you wanted it to be five years from now, where would you want it to be? Often what happens is the money thing dictates where our marriage goes truth is it should be exactly the opposite the marriage relationship should come before the work and the money thing so that you are growing towards the same goal and so i think a great question to ask is hey if your marriage could be anywhere you want it to be five years from now where would you want it to be that is not a question that you can answer on the fly it's something that requires you to think and to process it but then get together and actually share the answer to that question with one another. And what happens in the midst of that is that you get a dream and a vision for where you're going in your relationship. 